In this session, I'm going to cover doing a virtual sound check using a multi track recording that I did previously in Reaper. I did that in the previous session, covered how you would make that, and now I'm going to show how you might use that to have a virtual band, which means you can then do um, things like channel EQ, compression, etc., on the desk without having to have a band there. You can do it in a separate time, uh, in your own time, basically, without having to worry about musicians being present or being in a live situation. It's something we've used quite a lot. Um, to, to, uh, if you've got a new musician, for instance, and you want to um, look at how their, their, their vocals are EQ'd or their instruments EQ'd, you can do that without them having to be present. So I've got a scene set up on the desk already, the same one I used in the mod track recording session. I will go through the desk settings very quickly to talk through those. Some of them are a recap of what we did last time and then show you uh, playing back a recording. So the scene I've already got uh, with two vocals, guitar and keyboard, exactly the same as last time. Uh, the desk settings then we need to look at. Uh, first off, just double check again as I did before, audio, USB in the setup section, make sure you're on USB B and you've got the sample rate set to the same one you're using before. Then the key thing now is the I.O. So what we want to do is we want to tell the desk that the audio, instead of coming from our stage box or from local sockets, is coming directly from a USB and attached device, in this case my laptop. So what you can do is you go into the I.O. section and you can repatch the inputs. So at the moment, if you look here, you can see that the vocals are patched to the stage box channels 1 and 2, guitar is 5, and the keys are 7 and 8, stereo. So what I do is I go to USB, and from our previous session, I know that in my Reaper set settings, the routing, I've said the USB channel is the stage box channel plus 2. That's how I remember it. So the vocals are going to be channel 3, so I start patching it and I'll just say, do you want to confirm? Yep, that's great. So vocals are going to be 3 and 4. Guitar being stage box 5 is actually going to be USB 7. And the keyboard is going to be 9 and 10. Okay, so they're patched. So then the desk will start to receive the audio for those channels from my laptop over USB. Now, instead of having to remember to do that every single time, what I more typically do is save that as a library on the desk. So there's a library feature for inputs. If you go to that, then I've already got pre-saved the two main ones that I use, which is the, the live settings and the virtual sound check settings. So if I load my live stream virtual sound check, that's just done the same patching for me. It's patched those and others that I would typically use. And also means that when I've finished, I want to, I need to make sure I set the desk back to the, to connect up to the stage box again, otherwise it won't work on Sunday. I can just load that back and it'll reload in my stage box settings for normal service use. So let me go back and load the library for what we're doing today. So that's patched my inputs as I need them. That's fantastic. You can also see them in processing. So if we go to processing, if you look now at the top of each channel, it says the source. So before that would have said S-Link. It's now saying USB. You can actually change it on there as well. So if you go into the preamp section, you can change whether it's coming from a local or S-Link, etc., and what what input source. I find it's easier to do it on the I/O section because you can do a bunch of them at the same time. Plus, you've got the library, but you can do individual ones on here if you want to. Okay, so that's the desk set up ready. We're now going to Reaper, look at my project. In Reaper then, I've loaded up the project that I used last time, the one I created in, in the mod track recording session. That's set up. I've added some markers just so I can see where the key points are that I'm interested in looking at. The thing I need to do now is to make sure that my audio device is set again. So if I go back to settings, audio system, as we did in the previous one, change that to the ASIO, change that to the SQ ASIO driver, make sure I've mapped enough. In this case, it's outputs that I'm interested in, so I need to make sure I've mapped enough output channels to map the ones I'm looking at on the desk. You can do up to 32. I'm just gonna limit it to 12 for cl clarity on this session. So that do that, that's okay. And then I need to make sure my routing is done. So go to the routing matrix, and hopefully we've done this 
and when you set up the template in the first place so it's done I actually realized it was wrong on the previous session so I've been in and corrected it so here we're looking at the horizontal section so vocals I need to make sure that the vocals one is going to channel three two is going to four guitar is going to seven and the keyboard stereo here is going to nine and ten now I always keep them exactly the same for input and output because it's just easier it's easy to remember if you're using the same channels for input and output but you don't have to because obviously on the, you've got mapping capabilities on both on the desk and in Reaper but I just find it's easier to remember and keep my head around it if I keep them the same all the time otherwise it's very it can be very confusing right so I've that, got that set so what I'll do is I will start the play just start playing back and we'll have hopefully get it coming through the desk okay so that's now coming through the desk I'll turn it down um, if I jump ahead and guitar and the keyboard so I can hear them coming over this over the system if I just turn the level down so it's in the background the other thing I can do is I can go to meters as we used in the previous session so now I'm more interested in the top section of the metering I've got the the channels that I've mapped for input you can see on there so you can see that I've got vocals on channels 3 and 4 I've got guitar on 7 and I've got keyboards on 9 and 10 and when I start to play so if I play my track again you can see the level coming in on that channel 3 there because that's vocal mic 1 so this will help you troubleshoot if you're not getting what you expect to get you can come here you can see it's there and you can see you're getting a level come through so as it goes on you can see you're getting on the, on the, on the next vocal mic if you go on to guitar you can see you're getting guitar so that shows me the the audio coming into the USB if we go to processing section then you can also see the level on there so if I go into the guitar for instance the guitars playing I can see I've got some level coming in on that so that means I've now got the playback on Reaper coming into the desk and it's coming through the system and there's the keyboard now coming through so that's the basic mechanism that you can use so what what would you do with that so I'm not going to go into a great lot of details but one of the things I can do if I go back to Reaper one of the things I quite often do is say well actually I want to uh, I want to fine tune a particular um, instrument or vocalist or something so what I would do is I would go and find them in Reaper and I would mark out a typical section like this set Reaper to re uh, repeat mode so there's a button here that says repeat mode and I can basically just go in and get Reaper to continually loop around that one section and play it back for me so then I can concentrate on that one instrument and it'll just play over and over the same section and it could be a whole song or it could be a, a section of a song whatever's useful and then I can go in and listen and I can make changes so I can hear it over the PA system and hear what it would sound like I can choose whether I want the monitor speakers on or not they're turned off for the moment just to keep things simple but I can go in and look at the EQ, I could go in and look at the compression on it, I could make changes to that if I wanted to, I could tweak it and I could listen to it and I can do it over and over and over without having to have a musician standing there doing that for me. So that's quite a powerful tool, so you can go and use that um, as much as you like then to do that. And I've used that on a number of occasions to fine tune the, the guitarist or a vocalist or something um, and then save that back into the scene the next time they, that musician is playing. So that's how we use Reaper and the desk to do a virtual sound check. So as I said earlier, the one thing you have to remember at the end is to make sure you go back to your I.O. and you put all your channels back to being where they were originally, which is why I use a library. So if I use my library setting, I can make sure that at the end I've put my all my inputs back so that they'll be picked up otherwise somebody else will come along and it won't work on Sunday. Hopefully that gives you a good idea about how to do a virtual sound check. <laughs>